Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about the integumentary system, which really just involves your skin, hair, and nails. Now this seems like a, um, you know, less important system, but it actually ha has quite a bit of value for our body. So our skin is more than just a coat. It actually has quite a few jobs. Um, first and foremost, it keeps moisture in our body. If we didn't have skin, we'd dehydrate very, very quickly. So our skin acts like a barrier between our inside, which is a very um, wet environment, and the outside, which is much drier. There are also nerve endings in our skin that allow us to feel as to what's around us. Our skin also regulates our body temperature. It's our skin that is able to um, create or produce sweat to help cool us down as needed, and it also helps um, in creating goosebumps, which are actually used to help um, warm our body or trap our heat into um, and around our body. In our skin, we also have our sweat glands, which, like I said, produce sweat, and they also get rid of waste. So skin color, it's really determined by a chemical called melanin. Um, this melanin, the more you have, the more it can absorb harmful rays from the sun. This is a really, really good thing. This is also why um, people who tan very easily uh, or have darker skin or therefore more melanin, they are less likely to develop uh, skin cancers because of sun damage. So that melanin is a really great um, resource in our bodies. Unfortunately, those of us who are a little pasty, like myself, have very little melanin and therefore very little protection for, from uh, the sun's harmful rays. Our skin is the largest organ of our body. It's actually quite large, and it has um, two primary layers or two primary layers that we're going to discuss, the epidermis and the dermis. So you can see the epidermis is the top layer. It's actually very, very thin, but then we also have our dermis, which is the thicker layer underneath the epidermis. So our epidermis is made up of epithelial tissue. Now, like I said before, this epidermis is very thin. It's actually only about as thick as two sheets of notebook paper. It is, however, a little thicker in our palms, the palms of our hands, and the soles of our feet, which makes sense since this is the areas that um, take a beating. Our epithelial tissue, um, or epidermis, is dead. It is filled with something called keratin. Now, this keratin makes our skin tough uh, so it doesn't tear easily. The dermis, however, is a thicker layer underneath the epidermis. It is... Um, it's a connective tissue and it contains fibers of collagen. Now this collagen allows our skin to actually bend without tearing, so it gives us some flexibility. In this dermis, we also have a lot of small structures. The first structure in that dermis are blood vessels. So these blood vessels transport substances like our uh, blood and they can help regulate our body temperature. Uh, we also have nerves. These nerves, as we've discussed before, they're going to carry messages to and from our brain, and this is what helps us have that sense of feeling. We also have muscle fibers in our dermis. Now, this seems kind of counterintuitive, but these muscle fibers are attached to a hair follicle, and when they contract or when they get shorter, they actually cause the hair to stand up. This happens when we get goosebumps. It also happens um, like if we're frightened by something and the hair stands on the back of our neck, it's because those muscle fibers are shortening or contracting and they're causing the hair to stand upright. This is uh, very important because when the hair stands upright, it actually traps the heat and uh, keeps us warmer longer. Uh, also in our dermis, we have hair follicles. This is what actually produces our hair. Uh, the hair follicle itself is living. I know a lot of people have said that hair is actually just dead. No, the hair follicle itself is very much alive. If the, And when the hair follicle dies, that's when we experience some um, baldness. All right, next we have oil glands. These sound gross, but they are also incredibly important. Oil glands release oil to keep our hair flexible, and they help also keep our skin waterproof. Uh, we also have sweat glands. These sweat glands release sweat, obviously, and as that sweat evaporates, the heat is removed from our skin, our body is cooled, and what's really cool is that sweat also contains waste materials. So it's actually really, really healthy and good to sweat because it's getting rid of some of those wastes that we don't need. 
Okay, so here's an image of some normal skin. As you can see up at the top, we have that epidermis, which is really very, very small, very thin. But then underneath that, we have that dermis where the real action is happening. We've got the blood vessels, we've got the nerves, the oil glands, the um, you can see the hair follicles there. Underneath all of that is really just a fatty layer called adipose tissue. It's just fat tissue. Uh, it also serves a purpose, especially in maintaining warmth, but we're not going to get into a lot of detail there. Okay, next, hair. Hair is definitely more for just, or it's more than just making us look good. Hair actually protects our skin from UV light from the sun or UV light that can cause potential damage. It also keeps particles out of our eyes and our nose so that the, our eyelashes and eyebrows are used to keep particles out of our eyes. But then we also have those nose hairs called cilia that helps keep dust particles out of our nose and out of our airway. Our color in our hair also comes from melanin. This is why it's very rare to see someone with dark skin with very, very light hair. It, more often than not, the melanin is going to be similar for both. So that's why you, you're more likely to see someone um, with dark skin with dark hair. Now our hair also helps maintain our uh, body temperature and regulate our body temperature. Uh, folks who do not have hair for whatever reason uh, are more likely to need a hat to help keep them warm as we do lose a lot of heat out of our uh, head and our neck or the base of our skull. Okay, our fingernails. Fingernails are actually incredibly important. They protect the tips of our fingers and our toenails protect the tips of our toes. And if you've ever stubbed your toe, you know just how important it is to have a little bit of extra protection there. These, um, these nails allow our fingers to stay soft and sensitive and still keep a sense of touch but provide an extra layer of protection. Now these nails are formed from something underneath the skin. You can't see it. It's called a nail root. Um, and then you have the cuticle that you can see and then of course the nail. Now as the new cells grow, the nails grow longer. So all the, the new growth is pushing the cell outward or pushing the, the nail outward, which is why you need to cut your fingernails regularly. Okay. So our integumentary system, just like any other system, is unfortunately just, um, it's bound to be harmed in some way. Now, for the most part, it's probably going to be minor damage, and you may have all experienced this, like a blister, an insect bite, a small cut. This is all just minor damage. However, you can also experience much more serious damage, like skin cancer, which is known, or which is called melanoma. So cancer describes a tumor that invades other tissues and is again that uncontrollable cell growth. Um, when it is seen on, or actually I should say there are a few warning signs when it comes to um, skin cancer, but we'll go into that more in the next slide. Another uh, unfortunate consequence or another thing that may occur is just acne. And what's happening with acne is that our hormones are causing our oil glands to just produce so much oil. We've got excess of oil just um, all over the place. And that, again, is caused by our hormones, which are chemicals that our body produces, telling our body to release certain things or do certain things. And unfortunately, those hormones just get out of whack, and we produce a ton of oil that leads to um, like trapped glands or trapped um, pores that can lead to acne. So again, it's just really important to um, try to get our hormones under control and in the meantime, wash really well and uh, take care of your skin. Okay, so as I was talking about earlier, skin cancer. It is the most common kind of cancer. When this book was released, there were over 800,000 new cases each year. I would actually argue that value or that um, number is probably higher today. Now, the reason I included this image one of the best indicators for skin cancer is something that's called an asymmetrical mole. So I'm, most, if not all of us, have some kind of mole on our body. But a mole, traditionally, if it's a healthy mole, is going to be symmetrical, meaning it's the same no matter how you cut it. 
The picture here, however, is showing an asymmetrical mole because as you can see, the sides are not the same. This is often an early indicator of skin cancer. And if you do have an asymmetrical mole, it may be to your benefit to have it checked out by a physician because they can do a quick little biopsy on it to see if it is in fact cancerous. It's always better to err on the side of caution when it comes to asymmetrical moles. Okay, so how do we prevent skin cancer? Well, one of the best ways to do it, unfortunately, is to just avoid being in the sun when the sun is at its peak. So from about 10 a.m. until 3 p.m. Now, if you absolutely have to be out in the sun between those hours, wear your sunglasses or some kind of hat and um, in extreme cases, maybe even long sleeve shirts or long pants and definitely wear plenty of sunscreen. Okay, guys, we will continue talking about this in class, but I hope that gives you a brief summary as to of the integumentary system, excuse me, and if you have any questions, please feel free to let me know.